<laughs> thank you, thank you. How's everybody doing? Good, good. All right, super excited for this next session. Canada is in the process of trying to remove barriers for women entrepreneurs and drive small business growth. But how exactly are we going to shape a more inclusive economy to ensure the success of Canadian women? To tell us, please welcome Canadian Minister for Small Business, the Honorable Rechi Valdez. A big, warm welcome. Well, well, how are we doing Toronto? No, no, like, I came here for some energy. How are we doing Toronto? Yes, it's so good to be here with you at the Elevate Festival. I want to thank Amber and Lisa for her amazing team for inviting me to join you all here today. Before I begin, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that we are here gathered on the traditional, and ter the traditional territory of the Wendat, the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, Métis, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Elevate is such a special place to talk about innovation. Because here, we are not just discussing ideas, we are actively shaping the future. Innovation is all about the new ideas and turning them into opportunities that can change industries and communities. But none of that can actually happen without support. Support to help entrepreneurs grow and take their ideas to that next level. And as a former small business entrepreneur, this hits me very close to home. I know firsthand how challenging it can be to balance entrepreneurship with many life's responsibilities. When I started my baking business, I was working full-time in corporate banking, raising two kids, and yes, making it out to all those hockey practices. Like many entrepreneurs, I found myself working on my business late at night, after I put the kids to sleep, in between grocery shopping and juggling everything else during the day. But it was a leap of faith, one filled with both excitement and a lot of fear. And I would not have it any other way. And in fact, I wouldn't be here in front of all of you had I not gone through all those experiences. So I know many of you have those similar experiences that I have. Being an entrepreneur, especially for women, it's particularly harder as well. But here in Canada, only 18% of all businesses are women-owned, despite us making up half the population. It's like, a, it's like fielding a team, but benching half of the players. How is that fair? How is it fair if we're missing out on all the talent and all that potential? And that's why our government stepped up to develop Canada's first ever women entrepreneurship strategy in 2018. This is a $7 billion investment. That's right, investments made for you. This initiative is advancing women's economic empowerment and it's already supported over 110,000 women entrepreneurs. So there's about 1,000-ish people here. Picture this room and multiply that by 110 times. That is how many women we've been able to help since we've started, and including 60,000 from diverse and underserved communities. We are doing this by providing accessible microloans of up to $50,000 to help women entrepreneurs in investing in organizations like Elevate here at this conference that are helping women entrepreneurs start and scale their businesses. You are boosting and strengthening our economy. But innovation, it requires more, more than just access to loans. It actually needs the capital to scale up and grow. And that is why our Venture Capital Catalyst Initiative, or what I call Vicky, comes in. Through Vicky, we have committed $50 million to co-invest in venture capital funds, increasing access to capital for diverse fund managers and entrepreneurs, and ensuring they have the financial backing they need to bring their ideas to life. You know, I've really taken the time to, you know, travel across Canada and met many entrepreneurs, and I continue to be inspired by what I see each and every day. And I'm pleased to share that in our last budget, our government will be investing more, that's $200 million additional into Vicky to help women who are underrepresented in communities right across Canada. Of course, we know that financial supports alone is not enough. And that's why our government introduced the $10 a day childcare program. I'll tell you, when I had my two kids, I put them both in daycare. It felt like I was paying like an additional mortgage just so that I can go back to work. 
So $10 a day is now allowing women more than ever before to start their careers, start their businesses, and really contribute to the economy. Women should never feel like they have to choose between childcare and choosing their career. We have made it more flexible with parental leave. As you know, I think uh, some, some folks I know, I've met many husbands who have actually been able to take their own parental leave. My brother is a perfect example of this. Giving families the support they need during life-changing moments is monumental. And we even legislated our Pay Equity Act. That's right, folks. Ladies, equal pay for equal work. And we are, clo yes. <laughs> we are closing the gender wage gap and making sure that women are fairly compensated for their contributions. Trust me, this was not like how I did not grow up with this when I had my career growing up. Ensuring the full and equal participation of women in the economy will add up $150 billion. In my head, that is the potential. That is the potential I see when we invest in us. So investing in women isn't just the right thing to do, it's absolutely the smart thing to do. When women succeed, our communities thrive. Our communities and our economy grows. Together, we are building a future where every woman's ideas can become a reality. For mine, it started off baking my daughter's first birthday cake. And here we are. A future where no entrepreneur is left behind, and a future where the full potential of our country is unlocked through innovation, creativity, and the grit of every woman entrepreneur. So let's keep pushing forward together. Let's continue to invest in these bold ideas. Let's continue to invest in the future where every entrepreneur has a fair shot, regardless of where you come from, regardless of who you are, to make sure that we can leave a new mark in the world. So I want to say thank you so much. And I also want to thank, you know, the fact that each and every one of you have taken the time to be here at Elevate tells me that you're here to learn, tells me that you're here to grow. So as you heard from different speakers today and for the rest of the conference, take those ideas, be ambitious, try something new, and together we can Elevate. So I'd like to discuss these themes further, and I'm pleased to invite to the stage to Elevate co-founder and CEO, Lisa Ciceroni. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, I love this song. <laughs> Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Minister Valdez, welcome to Elevate. I am so excited that you're joining us today. I'm oh, so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Um, and so I would love to get started. Um, you covered it a little bit in, in some of your remarks, but you've had a life that is so full of diverse experiences, from a career in corporate banking, to starting your own bakery, to being the first Filipino-Canadian woman elected as a member of parliament and appointed to cabinet. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so impressive, it's really impressive. But I wanna go back to the beginning for a minute. When you were only nine years old, you emigrated from Zambia to Mississauga, Canada. Tell us about that experience. What was your nine-year-old self thinking at that time? Absolutely. Th great question. So I actually a shout out to my parents because um, my background is Filipino. My parents came from the Philippines and immigrated to a little city called Kitwe, Zambia, Africa, where I was born. And my brother and I were raised. And then we came here to Canada when I was nine. But at nine years old, I already knew that I was a creative. I already knew that I loved being creative and innovative. But unfortunately at the time, like that wasn't really cool. <laughs> my parents weren't too keen. <laughs> my parents weren't too keen on supporting the, the, the creative Richie. Yeah. They, and they wanted me to, you know, be an engineer. Um, they were like, thou shalt be an engineer. And so I pursued this um, for a very long time. And, but at nine years old, I, I dreamt really big. And unfortunately for me at the time, like I, I feel like a lot of that and who I am was really kind of like suppressed inside. Um, and by coming here to Canada, it really gave uh, my parents an opportunity to, I think many of us here have parents who come from different places and my parents wanted me to follow like that traditional, the traditional path. And that was really challenging because it was like a war inside of myself. My parents wanted me to do something, but I wanted to do something. So it was just this constant struggle. And I wanted to share that because I, I don't think when you read my bio, you get to actually see, but that's the reality that I had to deal with. 
And when you landed in Canada, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember this correctly, there, there was snow on the ground, yes. a lot of snow on the ground. Yes. And so even just being so young uh, and, and having your whole life up, uplifted, uh, how, how did you start to build a community? Um, and, and how did you start, when did you start to feel at home in Canada? That's a good question. Um, so over time, my parents, uh, when we immigrated here, they had a you know s- small group of families that we got together with on a regular basis, and you know just having home cooked food every day. My parents really struggled and they hustled. Um, my dad was an engineer, my mom's a nurse, so growing up, it, they, it was really important for them to make sure that they were at a roof over my head. They they gave me like what I would consider to be like the basics of like growing up, but I mean it was really challenging for sure. And so you you referenced that you were you felt kind of you were divided, yeah. um, and and when I watched this wonderful episode uh, of an, uh, a show called Making It in Canada, uh, which for those of you who haven't heard of it, it's an original series that follows the multi generational journey of migrant families that have created top Filipino entrepreneurs, artists, and leaders. And so in that episode, y- it was it was a beautiful quote. You said your life started to sing when you rediscovered creativity and, and self-discovery. And so how did that propel you back in, in, into the world of entrepreneurship? For sure, so from, uh, you know, I went to university, graduated, and I was doing all the things that, again, I was following all the steps. I graduated from school, parents were like, gotta find a husband, so I did that. <laughs> My parents were like, oh, gotta have some kids now, so then I had kids. <laughs> but I was following all the steps, and I think what was really um, incredible for me was, when my daughter turned one, so Cassidy, she's now nine years old, but when she turned one, I decided to venture into the kitchen and make her first birthday cake. And so out came, I always talk about it every time I share my story, but a two-tier pink vanilla fondant cake. Um, but back to what I was saying before, because I had um, really pushed down that creativity, yeah. when I made her cake, something in me felt alive. Something in me said, like, what is this thing? Um, and so my husband, when I was telling him, I was so excited to like bake, my husband's like, I need to take you somewhere. I'm like, okay. So we, he t- decided to take me to Montreal. We went to Montreal um, and he introduced, like, he took me around. He went, he went on this like crazy dessert tour, you know, <laughs> <laughs> patisseries and oh lingeries. <laughs> and then along the way, um, I was so inspired. I said like, why can't I do that? Yeah. So I came home, mastered my recipes, and really started to develop who I was through my baking. And it was so freeing to express myself in the cakes and the treats that I was making for my customers. And it, like, it, it brought me to life, honestly. It was the best thing ever. It's such a special story. And I love, as the, as the Minister of Small Business for, for Canada, that you intimately understand small businesses. And, and what do you see, based on your own experience, what were some of the biggest challenges that faced when you're you're starting a company? I think when you're starting anything, it's hard because you're trying to put yourself out there. You're putting yourself out to the world. It's very costly. And for me, I bootstrapped everything. Um, but I mean, I didn't know that there, we had, there was access to capital. I didn't know all the things that are available now. And so when I think about policies and how I can shape it to make it better for small businesses, um, we are doing things to help small businesses because it is expensive. It is hard, especially days with you know the cost of inflation, um, et cetera. And so just yes, a few days ago, um, we made two major announcements for small businesses. And I don't mind sharing because it's really going to make a difference. The first is for those of you who have businesses tra- that transact with Visa and MasterCard, those fees are gonna come down by up to 27% as of October 19th. So that will save you money. And instead of that money going to uh, Visa and MasterCard, it can go right back to you and your business. The second one, which is vitally important, is the Canada Carbon Rebates for small businesses. So these rebates, so long as you filed your taxes by July 15th for corporations, um, you will be returning $2.5 billion. So for a company here in Ontario, for example, that has about 50 um, employees, you're looking at uh, $20,000. So either way, uh, if you go to the Finance Canada website, you can see what the returns are. But by the end of the year, you will get that money back um, as well. That's so exciting. For sure. Uh, And so I want to go back to that uh, episode that I watched because uh, I had goosebumps hearing the pride in your parents' voice when they spoke about you becoming the first Filipino woman elected uh, as a member of parliament. <laughs> Thank you, I love, I love the energy out there. Um, and so 
what, what does representation mean to you? Why is it so important? Well, I, I grew up not seeing anyone that looked like me. Um, in school, I graduated from computer science. I was probably a handful of women in a class filled with men in corporate banking. Um, as I went, you know, moved up into the corporate ladder, there was very few people that looked like me. Being able to vocalize and stand up and be a leader wasn't easy, and there's a lot of challenges. Representation matters. Having diverse voices, regardless of where you come from, at the decision-making table, we all together can affect policies by sharing our shared experiences. I mean, coming with my background um, as an entrepreneur, uh, mom, baker, I come with all that every single day, and then I get to voice my experiences. So the more diverse um, you know, representation we have at decision-making tables, whether that's corporate banking or in government, municipal, provincial, federal, I think the better um, we are because Canada is so, it's like a mosaic. And we should have representation. Women should be at the decision-making tables. You know, diverse voices should be at the decision-making tables. And it's empowering when you can actually see that. And uh, here in Canada, so you know, Lisa, there's a close to a million Filipinos. So oh, wow. one in every 40 Canadians is of <laughs> Filipino descent, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the Absolutely incredible, and, and I think that ties back to um, what you were saying in your remarks around the woman entrepreneurship strategy. And I'd just like to, to touch on that for a second, because we were successful recipients of, of funding for that. And uh, as a result, we were able to launch an absolutely incredible program um, and, and called the Elevate Women Plus program that's in partnership with, uh, with the Firehood. And actually, later this afternoon, you folks have to come back because we are going to be announcing um, an investment into, into one or two companies um, as a result of this program. And so it's been, it's been game changing. Um, and allowing incredible women who, who what I found in g going through our third cohort is these women are not only building incredibly successful businesses, but what, from what I've seen in my experience, they tend to be building businesses with impact um, that are really changing the world around them. And so what do you see as the greatest impact on our society with the continued growth of women-led companies and initiatives? I mean, you said it yourself, women entrepreneurs have more sustainable businesses. We're conscious about the decisions. We, have, we build businesses that are inclusive, that are empowering. We actually love to give back. Many women entrepreneurs, when they get to a place where they feel like they're successful, the first thing they do is they get give back to community or they give back to others or they mentor. We have such a unique opportunity being like coming together with unique voices. And the other week I got a chance to meet the Dragon's Den season, um, women entrepreneurs from that season. So make sure you watch, oh, wow. watch out. There's some pretty <laughs> incredible stories, but these uh, women are solving problems of today mm -hmm. and coming up with innovative ways to solve for it and transforming different industries as a result. So we need more bold ideas. And the only way we could do that is, again, having strong, e equitable representation through women and diverse voices as well. I love that. Uh, and so as you referenced as well, the past few years have been difficult for many Canadians uh, with the economy, affordability, inflation making it difficult for, for families, uh, many of whom are right now living paycheck to paycheck. What would you say to Canadians about the future and why should we be optimistic moving forward? I get it. I, I just I want to acknowledge how difficult it has been. Like post pandemic, you and I just talked about it. You know, even kickstarting Elevate again, it's been challenging. But I, I would say that we have been able to greatly recover, especially as a country. We're performing well compared to all of our peers in the G7. Inflation is back down, interest rates are coming down, and that's the start. And again, I mentioned the women entrepreneurship strategy, but it's what we've done really is we're leveling the playing field through our women entrepreneurship strategy, our black entrepreneurship strategy that's already helped um, ten, like tens of thousands. Futurepreneurs, shout out to them who are empowering 19 to 39 year olds. Yes, I believe they're here today. Um, through Futurepreneur and investments through Futurepreneur, we are empowering young entrepreneurs. I think about like where I could have been had I had that support early on in my entrepreneurial adventure. But there's lots of ways that we're supporting young, um, young entrepreneurs, um, diverse entrepreneurs. And we even have a 2SLGBTQA plus entrepreneurship program and we empower indigenous entrepreneurs as well. So we've lowered taxes, 
we're reducing fees, we're returning Canada carbon rebates out to small businesses. These are all the different ways that we are continuing to support. And one of the things that I'm personally working on as well is the challenges I've heard from entrepreneurs is like, how do we get through federal procurement, what opportunities are, are there? So federally today, we, we you know, put millions if not billions of dollars. Why not carve out a portion of federal procurement to focus on small businesses? So they can actually mean the difference between a small business becoming a medium-sized business or being able to export elsewhere, but the, the opportunities are endless. That's amazing. I think if government were to be a customer of, of startups, that would obviously change, change their journey. Uh, Minister Valdez, uh, thank you so much. Honestly, your personal and your professional journey. Isn't she an inspiration? Thank you. Thank you for being here with thank us you so today. Much for and me. thank you everyone for <laughs> being here as well. Thanks everyone. Thank you.